Welcome back to Tuesday Prayer. You pushed play, and for that, I'm so grateful. I am your host, Dacia Ruth with Glow Girl World, and I know that today's word will be powerful, transformational, because his word never returns void. I read every comment, and I appreciate every like and subscription and share, so don't forget to share your thoughts as you catch the replay. I'd love to see your comments underneath the video. Today we are returning to the Bearing Fruit series and kicking it off with faith. A conversation about one of the most important pieces of our journey and walk with the Lord. And I am learning so much more about how important it is to God for us to have faith. What does faith look like? How do we begin to grow in our faith? and what is really required of us to show and prove that we actually believe God for who he is and what he says. Let's tune in. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord for another day. Welcome back to Tuesday Prayer. I am your host, Garcia Ruth. And if you have any prayer requests, please put those in the chat um, throughout. Um, please feel free to grab your water and your Bible and your journal and let's get into prayer. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just pause. We just pause and thank you for entering into this room. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being omnipotent. Thank you for being sovereign. You reign and rule in the hearts of man. And so as we take a breath in and out, we inhale and exhale, we breathe your air. We operate this body that you gifted us, that you loaned us. Thank you, God, for these gifts. Thank you, Lord, for activities of our limbs. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a right mind to call upon you. Thank you, Lord, for food, shelter, and clothing. Thank you, Lord, for covering our families and our children. Thank you, God, for being with our spouses. Lord, thank you for covering us even in our singleness, Lord, thank you, God, for all that you are doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord. We just pour out a spirit of gratitude. Thank you for the, your creation. Thank you, Lord, for creating us and making us wonderfully well. We're wonderfully made. Thank you, God. You're perfect in all your ways. Even when you created us, you made no mistakes. So Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time together. And we ask that you would bless and keep us. Bless this word as we go forth to learn of you and be present. All of you and none of me. All of you and none of us. In Jesus' name. And if there be anything that's not like you, we ask that you would remove it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, welcome back to today's Tuesday prayer. We're so grateful to have you in this space. And for today, we're going to be talking about um, the fruit of the spirit. We return to the fruit of the spirit series, bearing fruit series. Um, and today we're talking about faith. Um, I did not put Galatians 5 and 22 on the screen, but I hope that you that you're adding that to your memory verses. Uh, verses that you will be mem memorizing. Um, Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And so I, I usually use that to summarize that we may be dipping into the Old Testament. We may be dipping into the New Testament, but it's one book for a reason. Some people like to try to separate it out, but it's one book for a reason. And for that reason, we got to know that Jesus Christ was represented in the Old and we can read that to you. And he's represented in the new. He's the same 
yesterday, today, and forever. Uh oh, my screen got messed up. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And for that reason, we got to trust and know that he is God. He is Lord. He is God of all. And so we're talking about faith. And faith is really a vast topic. It's a deep topic. And I'll say to start off as a little testimonial story is that I've been serving God all of my life. I've been um, really, truly seeking the Lord since I was maybe six years old. I started thirsting after the Lord at six years old, started really reading my Bible um, on my own accord. It wasn't something that necessarily anybody did. I used to go to church with my grandmother. I grew up Catholic um, and I used to go to church with my grandmother and I really wanted to know the Lord for myself at that young age, I remember. And, um, you know, I followed through. I did my first communion. I studied with um, the priest at seven. I would go to um, a, uh, what I forget what it's, the rectory where the priest lived, the priest and the nuns lived. And I studied with them at seven years old because I had a thirst and desire to understand God. And I would go to church and I was trying to understand the Lord. And so I at a young age, had a thirst for God. And I believed God. As I grew older, I moved away from the Catholic church, but I still believed in Christ, right? I believed in Jesus. And that is where my foundation is as a, even today. Um, but one of the things that has always stood fast for me and was God. But then until recently did I realize that the need for faith. And you can think that you're following the Lord, but if you don't have the faith piece, then there's still something missing. And faith is, we're going to find out what faith is now. And as we read Hebrews 1, 11 and one, and let's keep in mind that this is a part of the fruit bearing fruit season. So because we want to bear fruit, one of the fruit of the spirit is faith. So it's a component that, lo that the Lord considers very important. And Hebrews 11 and one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what does that mean? So that means that, you know, as I, for me personally, as I was journeying along my way, there were times where I needed proof before I believed it. I would be praying, God, I need a financial breakthrough, but I didn't believe the financial breakthrough was coming until I saw the dollars in my bank account. Am I in anybody? Am I aligning with somebody today? I I really needed the breakthrough for a family member for their health, but I didn't believe it until I actually saw the doctor come back with a favorable report. There were times where I was really focusing on God, I believe you, but then there would be a situation where I was single and I was praying for a spouse, but I did not believe God until he gave me my first date <laughs> when it was going well. And I was like, okay, well, maybe this could be something. Okay, maybe God has answered my prayer. Could, but could I stand in faith before? A quick story again is that I was, um, you know, I've sung most of my life since I was a little girl as well, since I was like th four or five years old, I started singing. And what, at five years old, I was performing around the city of Chicago, um, singing with different groups and traveled abroad to sing, sing with um, a choir, a youth choir. And when I got to college, I auditioned for a homecoming show and at the University of Illinois, for those that I'm um, orange and blue as well. Shout out to my alumni. And when I was singing in that choir, I mean, excuse me, when I auditioned for the homecoming show, I made it, but I didn't have any music. I wanted to sing a specific song by Yolanda Adams. It's called Ye of Little Faith, ironically. So I was singing this song about having faith. And um, I forget the lyrics at this very moment, but I'll have to dig it up and I'll play it for you guys. Maybe I'll play it at the end of today. And so Ye of Little Faith, um, basically says, how can you not believe God? Right. So I, I wanted to sing this song and it was homecoming. And at that time, it wasn't really popular to, to sing gospel music, especially for a homecoming show. So I was bold even in that. And they accepted me. They were like, okay, this is cool. So I was like, okay, great. But I couldn't find the music to go to it. 
And so I auditioned, I got it. And it was like two weeks until the show and I didn't have anybody to play for me. And I could not find the track and I could not find anybody to recreate the track. So I continued to practice. I continued to practice and I had nobody to play for me. The, the week end of the show, the show was Saturday night, it's Thursday. I still have no one to play for me. I practiced, I practiced and I said, well, you know what? I don't know what the Lord is going to do. If I have to, I'll sing this acapella. It might be a little weird, but I'll sing this acapella. And so I practiced and I practiced. People kept asking me, so what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. Meanwhile, I kept asking people, but I believed that God was going to deliver in that moment. I believed God. And so I showed up um, the day of, I got my attire ready Friday. I went and grabbed some stuff from the mall. I got my attire ready. I went and got my hair done. I got my shoes on on Saturday came and, you know, I reached out to some people and maybe it was Sunday. I don't recall actually what day it was, but whatever day it was, I reached out to some people, I had been reaching out to them all week. Hours before the show, they said, Dacia, we can play for you. We're, we're, we can play for you. They had not even heard the song before. Well, it's not a popular Yolanda Adams song. They hadn't even heard the song before. So four hours before the show, we met up in a rehearsal room space and we went over the song. I ended up on that stage with, um, I want to say like at least a seven piece band. They played the song seamlessly and I had a praise dance scene. So I had, um, I, I had a praise dancer. I had three horns. I had all that I needed within hours, but it came as a result of me doing the work. It came as I had to match my action with my belief. See, if I didn't believe God, then I wouldn't have practiced. If I didn't believe God, I wouldn't have continued to ask people to, to help me out. If I didn't believe God, I wouldn't have moved my feet. And so I, that was one of my first real encounters where I was like, man, God, you really delivered because I didn't know what I was going to do if you didn't send any musicians my way. I was going to be in front of hundreds of people just singing this random song a cappella. It wouldn't have made as much sense. And so I praise God, but that is what faith is. So Hebrews 11 and two says, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. And so you not going to receive, could it be possible that we as service of God may not receive a good report if we don't have faith? But remember, it's the evidence of things not seen. It's what we don't see, but we still hope for. So what is it that you have to believe that God is going to do? But you don't quite see the evidence of it yet. I know I have a several things. I have a laundry list. I have a laundry list of things that I need him to deliver on that is not quite came through yet. God, I have not seen this. I have not seen the evidence of you of this yet. I have not seen the evidence of the breakthrough yet, but I believe you. So uh, Hebrews 11 and verse six is, and this is like my favorite, favorite verse y'all, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So what, with, it's impossible to please God without faith. That's how important this faith is. It's impossible to please God without faith. But remember, faith is being able to move beyond what you see. Faith is being able to believe a thing you've been praying for breakthrough in your marriage. You got to believe that it is so even before your husband turned the thing around. That's what faith is. You got to believe that the health report is going to come back favorable, even when the doctors have already told you that it's looking bleak. Even when the doctors have told you that it's not working out. Another quick story is that I had... Um, I don't know. I'm very, I have a lot of great stories, by the way. I have a lot of testimonies myself. And so I guess they're coming out today. But I'll say that uh, recently, about uh, six or seven months ago, um, a sister friend of mine, and I don't know if she's on this call, but a sister friend of mine had a friend whose husband was, health was failing. And she called, she cried out for um, prayer warriors to, to pray. And he was, uh, his organs were failing and the doctors were saying basically that it was over for him. And she cried out um, to, to a group and said, we, we needed to pray because, you know, his life was on the line. 
And so I asked her if I could speak with his wife. I don't know his wife, but I asked if I could speak with his wife, um, with her, yeah, with his wife. And so his wife got on the phone and we prayed together. And I encouraged her in the Lord and I exhorted God and I told her that God can, can change things around even now. And I believed God that he could. And within a few hours, the, the reports were completely different and he's well today. He's doing completely well today. And so when we pray, when we have sick, we, we have loved ones that are sick in the hospital, we have to go in believing that it is possible. We, we see him healed. We see her healed. We see that situation re, um, reversed. We see the Lord delivering. We have to be able to see it. We have to have the evidence of it before it even happens. Let's continue on. Verse seven, by faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. And I love this part of the verse because, you know, we think that we are supposed to move fearless all the time. Noah moved. And, and I know in this instance, he is, he moved with fear, meaning he was fearing God, but there also may be a time where you have to move to, and be a little bit afraid. You may have to move in, in faith and still not be certain it, it, you know, as you begin to move your feet, you might still be like nervous about it, right? At first, but you still have to move. That is faith. But he was fearing God because being warned of God, he moved fearing God. So we got to fear God more than we fear man. We can't be fearful of the situation. We have to fear God more than we fear man. I am talking to myself. If I'm not talking to anyone else, I promise you, because I'm dealing with a situation now where I have to believe God that he's going to deliver. I have to believe him. And I pray that you are touched and pricked in your heart today to believe God, that if he is telling you to move on a situation, if he's warning you, hey, to move out of the way on a situation, that you can believe him enough and be committed enough to move when he says move. And you, so in verse seven, it says, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So Noah, by being obedient, condemned the world, but it was through his faith. And one last place, I believe two last places. And then we're going to close out for today. And by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, which he should after receive an inheritance obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. And so Abraham had faith and he was called by God. Let's be clear. He was called by God to go into a new place to receive an inheritance. And he was obedient. So faith requires obedience. But faith requires action, which we'll see in, in the next time that we come together. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Can you pick up and leave and go somewhere new? If God told you today to go to Texas or go to Georgia, or if you live in Illinois, you know, go to Memphis or go to Wisconsin, could you pick up and go and not even know where you're going to move, where you're going to go? That is faith. This is what we're going to be talking about in the upcoming weeks. How can we build up our faith and how can we believe God so that we can move even before it's played all the way out? The plan is not all the way clear, but can we move our feet? Hebrews 11 and 11, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. God promised Sarah, she believed God. And even though the promise wasn't delivered right away, she was patient and she waited. So we see a few things that when you have faith as Abraham did, you're not gonna know the outcome, but you gotta move anyway sometimes. When you have faith like Noah did, you're going to be obedient and you're going to fear God more than man. And you're going to do what he asks you to do, even when you don't understand how it's going to come together. Right. You're going to believe God for what he says. And when you're like Sarah, you're going to believe God, 
because you know that when his when he promises something to you that is, he's not going he's going to do everything but fail he's going to deliver on his promises you just have to be patient and wait on him so these are the sub components of faith obedience you got to move when he says move and you got to trust him and you got to you got to believe in him and so as we close out if any of you lack wisdom and that should be us all. Don't think that any of us have all the wisdom that we need. We always need extra wisdom. Please note it. So if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth it not. And abradeth not, it shall be given him. But let him, here goes his faith again. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So even when we pray, we have to believe. Prayer without belief, prayer without faith is just nothing. So we have to believe nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in his ways, in all his ways, excuse me. So as we close out, I praise God for today. If you have any prayer requests, please put those in the chat. Thank you, Connie. Praise God for the great word. We thank the Lord for all that he is doing. And we ask God that he would increase our faith. We ask the Lord to increase our faith, that we can believe God even before it is so, that we can start walking in confidence in him. If you have any testimonies, um, I shared three today, so we're not going to do any other ones. But <laughs> if you have any testimonies, you can email us at hello at glowgirlworld.com. This way we can kind of keep it succinct. Um, but please send share over your testimonies. I know you have some. I know, I know the Lord has been doing great things. And so please share because it's for somebody else that needs to hear um, and be encouraged and be reminded that God is powerful and he's still in the blessing business. Um, we have decided to do a monthly fast. And I apologize because I did not announce it sooner. But if you are so inclined to Pray and fast with us starting tonight, June 6th. We're going to kick it off tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. So this is going to be 24 hours with no food and water starting tonight. So you have all day to prepare if you're if you're so willing. And remember that some things only come by prayer and fasting. So if you're looking for specific breakthroughs in relationships, in your lives, and for others, one of the key components of that we remembered from our book club book about prayer and fasting is that you pray and fast for others more so than you pray and fast for yourself. So let's put a list together. You can text me your list of things that you'll be fasting for. People that you know that need breakthroughs. Um, I know a few that I'll be adding to the list, but send me a text. Um, you can text anything to me, but specifically you can text prayer if you're not already on my list at 844-934-1314. But you can text me there for your prayer request as well if you would like somebody to pray on your behalf. 844-934-1314. Um, your prayer request can go there. And you can also text the word prayer if you want to get reminders and updates. And we're continuing on for the month of June with the power to change for our book club. You could also text book club to that number. And the power to change, please get this book for yourself. I promise you. It is life changing. Get this book for you, not for me, not for anybody else. Not just so you can say, yeah, I got it because I was in the book club. Get it because you want to learn how to change. You want to learn how to, to get transformation, true transformation in your life. Uh, we don't want to just talk about it. We want to be about it. And so get this book and get the tools that the Lord has provided to his creation to help us. Um, for those that want to learn how to donate, we're collecting donations because we're doing a great work for this Restore Her Retreat. If you want to donate, I have Cash App and Zelle. Screenshot the screen. Praise God, Sister Mary, you have your book. Amen, amen, amen. So screenshot this if you would like to donate. We are accepting donations at any time. And if ever the Lord puts it on your heart to donate, please do so. We appreciate everybody who's donated thus far. The Restore Her Retreat is coming Yes, you can get it on Audible too. So don't feel free to get it on Audible and however you choose to. And we're going to close out for today. Thank you for being a part of Tuesday Prayer. We love you. And until next time, see you soon. And the last reason I pray is because prayer is my weapon. Prayer is the thing 
that can go into situations and change things when I can't change them. The Bible says it like this, that he's given you all authority. You, I know, I know, I know, I know. But he's given you with all your flaws, with all your mess up, he's given you all authority over every spirit that's not like him. And he said, you have this secret weapon that in prayer, you can loose and bind things through your prayer. And those words mean something very simple. When you lose something, it means you allow it. When you bind something, that means you disallow it. And the Bible says as believers in Jesus Christ, we can walk around and we can say in the name of Jesus, I bind all confusion. That means I disallow confusion in here. And God says all of heaven backs that up. And some of you need to take out your weapon. Your weapon has been pray to catch the bus and then you run as fast as you can. You can't pray to catch the bus and stroll down the street, right? Like <laughs> yeah. you gotta pray to catch the bus, run as fast as you can because then if you miss the bus, it's not your bus. Right. But if you don't run, that could have been your bus. And if you don't pray, that could have been your bus. Right. So I try to do both, like all of my work, all of my faith, and then, you know, rejection is God's protection. It's mine or it's not. Mm -hmm. and, and in this case, it was mine. Thank you, Lord. If there is anybody that would like to pray out, um, I forgot to acknowledge somebody, but if there's somebody that would like to pray out, in fact, Jaquetta, um, if you would do me a favor and come off mute and pray, I would appreciate it. I'm going to change the settings now. But Jaquetta, I saw your name come up and the Lord um, put your heart, your name on my heart. So if you would be so kind as to pray for us, that would be great. Thank you. Are you able to come off me? Yes. Okay, thank you, sis. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you that you woke us up this morning. We thank you that we know that we are on your minds because you give us truth and you give us encouragement to press on. Mm -hmm. In what is important to, to help us grow. We thank you, Lord, for each other and for knowing you and that you are God. We thank you for all things, Lord, but mostly because of who you are. Because without you, we couldn't be alive, breathe, have breath, knowledge, or anything. We pray, Heavenly Father, for every sister on this call that this day we will be blessed and we will be encouraged to be all that we can be in you and to put you first in everything. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' name. We pray for all those on this call that need healing and a touch of encouragement and a blessing. We thank you for Sister Nasia. We thank you for the leaders and the people that teach us truth and encourage us to keep going in these hard times. Please let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing in your sight this day. We commit our works towards you this day so that our thoughts are established according to your will. We know that you are the great God who sits high and he looks low and you think of the sparrows. So we know that we are on your thoughts this day. We look to you, we worship you, we thank you for all things in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus', in Jesus name. name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name. And we're praying, Sister Connie, for your um, daughter's grandfather who has kidney failure and needs dialysis. We're praying, Sister Martin, for your friend who was recently diagnosed with cancer. Lord, we're praying for healing, um, we're touching and agreeing for all those who are in need. Um, and we're asking as we fast tonight, we're touching and agreeing on these things that the Lord would move like never before. Um, again, if you have any other prayer requests that you'd like to uh, send privately, you can text it to me to that 844-934-1314 number. And we're going to kick off the fast tonight. If you would like to join in on the fast, send us a text there. Just let us know that you're going to be 
um, participating in the fast. And we hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day in Jesus name. I'll play the uh, Yolanda song next week because I don't have it queued up, but 